Hello, 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 hello. This is G. You're watching all astrology, and we're going to talk about the week of December 11th. Yeah, we're into December. So I've been checking out the chart, um, seeing what's going to happen. And I feel like for this week, the biggest events, there's not a whole lot switching up. All right, so let's get this this party i was gonna say charty let's get this charty started there's the chart and let me get it marked up for you first things first we're gonna start with the date so yeah this is for the chart the week of i should have said this from the get oh i think i did december 11th there it is december 11th the week of now there's not a whole lot that has changed or that is changing this week all the planets are pretty much staying where you're seeing them, at least in the signs that they're in. Okay. The difference is, the difference is we have a new moon coming up. Okay. So we have a new moon and the new moon is going to be right there on the 12th. So it's tomorrow. Yes. Well, I'm not sure when you're watching this video, but um, December 12th, interesting new moon. Make sure you go watch the video for the new moon. If you haven't seen it already, I'll link it below. But you do see 1212, right? Yeah. Very interesting. Very interesting energy. And we'll see just how interesting. I love to use the astrology to confirm. Because, you know, everybody's got a video out about, okay, this is this magical, mystical time. This is when this and this happens. But I'm always like, let me look at the astrology to see, like, if there's really if it's legit. That's just how I do it. I got to always look at the astrology to prove. I want proof. That's just me. And what else do you see here that I have written down on this chart? We've got that Mercury begins its retrograde the very next day after the new moon. So it's on the 13th that the Mercury will begin her retrograde. Okay. Now let's go look at Mercury real quick. And there it is. Mercury is at 822 in Cappy, beginning the retrograde. You guys have heard me talk about this. I have the Mercury retrograde videos up on the channel, so I don't want to spend too much time on this, but Mercury has to go backwards now, right? The next day she's going to be going backwards. So it's a retrograde. We put the R there for the retrograde and her numbers will turn to red when she starts retrograding. As an example, you'll see we got Vega here at 15 in red. That means it's retrograding. That's how you know, okay? Some softwares just show you a letter. They'll put the, like the letter R near it. And sometimes they make that R really tiny. So you got to, I don't know what system you use. By the way, if you don't have a system and if you don't even have a chart and you want your chart, uh, just, just reach out to me and I'll help you any way I can. So we have Mercury going backwards and she goes backwards. She has to travel back into Sagittarius. So it's really interesting because I think it's super interesting because of the fact that the retrograde is going to happen as she travels through hold on, two signs. It's not just Mercury in one sign. And this makes this complex. It means there's more energies involved. Remember, Mercury is conversations and communications. It's thinking, it's talking. Well, in Capricorn, it's businesses, it's governments, right? It's the boss energy. It's the goat right? The people who are in charge. And as it goes backward into Saggy, Saggy says, well, there might be some miscommunications. We might, things might get confusing here. Things, things might be exaggerated here. Um, Sagittarius is also the truth and freedoms, right? It's the beliefs, it's spirituality and religion. Not that they're the same thing, but it is, it is that. And it's the philosophy on life, but it's also uh, foreigners, foreign lands, foreign countries. So for wherever you live and you're looking at that other country across the pond thinking, oh my God, look at what they're going through. I think, I think there's so many of us, you know, in different parts of the world that are doing that where, cause you know, on the starry night lives, uh, every Saturday night at 9 PM central time, uh, I am live. And so I take questions, we talk, we look at charts and I hear from people all over the world, which I absolutely love. So if you're watching this video, let me know uh, if you're still here at this point in time listening, let me know where you're watching from. 
but Saji um, is the truth and the freedoms. And it's about the freedoms of my truth and it's the wisdom, but it's the future and the future of my freedoms too. That's Sagittarius energy. Now this Mercury will go back to 22 degrees. She's got to go backwards and travel to 22 degrees. So it's about right there where I put her about 22 right there is where she goes. And that is going to be, um, likely, uh, a big moment because it will likely have, um, the North node. I'll give you guys that little bit right there. It'll likely have the North node that it's training when it gets there, because see the North node is over here in fire in Aries. And what is Aries? Aries is the war. It's the battling. It's the fighting. That's Aries energy. And the North Node this month, because you see it's already at 23, right? She's at 23, 23, 27. So she does end up going back to like in seven days time, this North Node will have moved almost a full degree. So that means she'll be right where I have this black line. That means North Node will be at 22, 27. 2237, I think, or something that she's at. And so, yes, uh, that's the North Node. I drew her in blue, which is that symbol right there in black, the North Node. So you hear the degrees, 23, 22. And I just said that the Mercury over in Saggy has to go back to 22. So that tells us the news and the information, what we're talking about, right? Uh, that's a trine. That's a trine. So that Mercury trining the North Node, the North Node is also about our future. It represents our future, where we're headed. So it's our thoughts about our future and our body and our freedoms, but our identity, our identity. How do you identify? When we think of Aries energy and we think of the moon's nodes, which is what the North Node is, it is a, it is a moon's node. You always hear me say either North or South Node. But anytime I say no, think moon. So this is history. This is ancestry. Right. Your heritage. Where do your people originate from? Okay. So the battle and Mercury trining it and Mercury and Aries energy being about fighting and my independence. Yeah independence and I want my freedom, but I'm willing to fight for those freedoms. You, you see, you see where I'm going with this, right? Yeah. So that kind of gets activated. I would think um, there might, it looks like there may have been by some of the energies and by some of the November uh, readings I was looking at, it almost looked like there, you know, maybe things took a little bit of a backseat, you know, maybe a pause, I think is the word people are using. So maybe that happened, right? But Either way, there's a change of something happening here. And this will likely be remarkable because in seven days time, the node is at 2236 and Mercury will still be in Capricorn. Mercury will only have gotten to in seven days time because we're just doing the week of in seven days time. This Mercury will only be over here like at five degrees in Cappy. She doesn't get very far in seven days, but she moves three degrees. Okay. And in Cappy, she goes a little bit slower because, well, Capricorn is slower. It's time. It's Saturn. It slows things down. It's earthy and, and Mercury is, is air. So she doesn't move as, as lightning fast, but your thoughts are a little bit better when they're in Cappy, even though it might feel restrictive and maybe, maybe seriousness and responsibility and duty kind of dip in. So the fun and games and the optimism, you know, we notice the difference when Mercury dips into Capricorn because it came out of Saggy, which is optimistic and fun and all about, I'm ready for the next adventure. Cappy says, but we got to take care of these bills first. You know, we, we got to, there are some steps we have to take and we have to follow the rules. So it, so it's serious, right? Um, and then there's Pluto. There is Pluto at 2846. 2846. And the minutes matter when we talk about Sedna and Pluto. They matter a lot. Okay, so there's Pluto. And so in seven days time, Pluto doesn't really move. The only thing that moves are the minutes. And the minutes are the second number. You see where the degrees are, right? They're written as a degree. You can see the, the little circle that represents the degree there. So 28 minutes and 28 degrees and 46 minutes right here. 
Uh, yeah, in seven days time, Pluto is going to move and the minutes are going to go to 58. 58 minutes is where it will be. And then Sedna is over here. Let's take a look at Sedna since we started talking about her. There she is. There is Sedna in Taurus. All right. Believe it or not, this is a, a faucet. <laughs> I know it just seems cheesy, but that's what it is. She doesn't change degrees at all. She doesn't change her degrees at all. But remember, you're going to pay attention to the minutes for Sedna. And you see she's at 2947 and she's in red. So she's moving backwards. So she's actually going to have a lot more power right now because she's retrograding. When we go retro, we have more power. We feel that planet's energy, it's more intense. It's more strong, okay? So we have 2947 and uh, 2846. So they're still a degree apart roughly, but they get closer, all right? They're definitely getting closer because Pluto's going to be at like 58 in a week. And again, that's just the minutes. So what does that mean? It just means that in the coming videos for the next one for the 18th, we're going to be talking more about Pluto and Sedna and the change and the transformation that these two planets are going to cause. What are they changing and transforming? Well, just think of Taurus and just focus on um, the earth and the creature comforts and the food and the planet, what's good for the planet and the abuses of the planet because Sedna is angry about the abuses and the pillaging of the planet, absolutely, and her natural resources, the plants, the animals, the abuse. You know, you think of, you know, you think of all the drilling and the, and the, yeah, the digging and the fracking, and we think of all the natural, beautiful gold, oil, right? All the beautiful resources, and there's a whole shitload more of other things that get pulled from the earth. Um, to for man, for man's, you know, whether it's for cell phones, you know, we think of crystals, we think of uh, of silver and copper, we think of things for 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 electricity and for automobiles and electric automobiles, uh, oil for the gasoline, right? We like there's a lot of things that man takes because man's, you know, hey, I'm man. You think I'm gonna walk? Hell no, right? I need a car, right? I need to be advanced, and I and I and I need to make money, and that's the bottom line. It's the abuses for the sake of the dollar. To, to, it's the greed. Bottom line, it's the, it's the greed. Because, you know, if you work in harmony with the planet, you understand how to take and how to give back, right? How to honor the planet and the animals and how to take care of those things and how to work in harmony with the planet so that we can coexist together. And that's what Sedna is likely here to teach us. Absolutely. And then Pluto. Pluto, change and transformation, government and businesses, and the abuse. Well, with the regulations or deregulations or too much regulations or not enough regulations, you know, anybody who's for money and tons of wealth is going to say, oh, there's a government oversteps. That's what you always hear. Government oversteps. We're losing our freedoms, you know. And so, folks, this isn't to, to, to pick out a party or pick out a side. Use some common sense. The word is harmony. Harmony. All I can tell you for certain is that Pluto says, if you have used your money and you have not looked out for the well-being of others, if you have abused your power, if you have taken your power and said, well, I'm the one in charge, I can do this. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> I can't do anything about it. The other person next to you can't do anything about it, but I can guarantee you Pluto can do something about it. And Pluto will will say, hey, guess what? I'm here because I saw the abuse of the power, right? And so again, big businesses and governments and people who have abused the power that was handed to them when they were voted in, possibly, right? The people who abused the power, who were in power in the past, because Pluto is big on the past, very much so. Remember the soul power, the moon and Pluto? the North and the South node. That's all about the past. So I have a whole lot of other planets marked off, but the truth is they don't move very much, folks. They pretty much stay right where they are. Mars stays where Mars is. 
Mars just moves five degrees. So it's going to be at 17 in Saggy. The sun is going to move to 22 degrees, which is interesting. I'm sorry, 26 degrees. Actually, that will be interesting. When the sun gets to 26, let me focus on that for a quick second, and then we'll end it here. When the, when the sun gets to 26, that's interesting because it's conjunct the galactic center. So the sun is a person in charge, okay? The sun is a person in charge. It's in Sagittarius, the judicial, do judicial system, judicial branch of the government. So this is justices, the state, you know, the state, courts. You know, we think of Supreme Court justices. We think of federal judges. We think of, you know, the states who have their own judges, right? And the rulings that come down. And so likely something big and it having to do possibly with somebody in government because Mercury will still be in Capricorn at that time. And that's in, and that's the seven day out. Uh, the Venus still will be over here sitting in Scorpio. So it has to do with money, but shared resources. And Venus will be at 17 degrees of Scorpio in seven days time. Okay. So the planets, Venus and the sun and Mercury and Mars are pretty much in the same signs that they were in the, from the week before. So the biggest story this week is the sun conjunct Mercury I'm sorry, the sun conjunct the galactic center and Mercury still in Cappy, but Mercury beginning its retrograde and the new moon on the 12th. If you don't know what all those things mean, you can go watch the individual videos or you can rewind this video to listen to parts that you may have skipped over or, you know, we're busy doing 101 other things and you didn't get to hear. All right. So this caps it off. If you're still with me, thank you so much for your time. I always appreciate it. Take care. Bye-bye.